Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and today I'm excited to say that we've learned even more information about the new DLC coming to Rainbow Six Siege in Operation Chimera. To start things off, Ubisoft released a short CGI cutscene that sort of sets the stage for the new Infected game mode. What I was not expecting though, was how much effort they put into the CGI trailer, and how incredible it looks. It features Ash, Tachanka, and Thermite, and has more character development between all of them than the last two years of Rainbow Six Siege. I don't know about you guys, but this really reinforces my stance that I would love for Ubisoft to create short little mini campaigns in the future. It might be asking a bit too much for them to release a full single player, like eight hour campaign, that might be a bit too much, but if they were able to give us bite size mini campaigns that told the story of these operators and the interactions between them so that we did get character development, we learned more about them, that sounds absolutely incredible. And while I realize that that would be a very big investment on Ubisoft to make, they're already showing that with this new upcoming DLC, that they're going all in. I don't think any of us were expecting to have a full-blown CGI cutscene like this, and there might be more. Because there's three different maps, maybe this is just the introduction, maybe after the first map you complete it, you get another cutscene, and then it progresses and it tells its own little story. How amazing would that be? If all of that is the case, maybe they're testing the waters to see if this is something that the community wants. Like, if this goes over well, who knows, maybe we will actually get these short little campaigns, and I am 100% on board with that. Uh, another thing that's really exciting is that we also learn more about the infected zombies that we're going to be fighting. The first one is called a grunt, which I imagine is going to be the most common. The twist on it, compared to all of the other slow moving zombies in every other video game, is that as soon as the parasite, which is controlling the host, as soon as it realizes that you're nearby, it's gonna armor up and make it harder for you to take it out. And so if you go in making a lot of ruckus, you're gonna have a harder time taking out the specific infected. The second one is called a breacher. They're gonna be very agile, moving around the map very quickly, and their entire job is to blow things up. Either it's going to be walls that are adjacent to them, which opens up other flanking routes for the other infected to try to swarm you. This includes normally undestructible walls, so if you reinforce something, it's not gonna matter, it seems, if a breacher is nearby, or if they get lucky enough and, you're, and you don't spot them, to detonate directly next to you and deal a lot of damage. To assist them with this, we have the third infected type called Rooters. Now their entire job is to send out coral spikes from the ground to injure and immobilize their targets. And so I'm guessing their entire design is that if you get stuck by one of these spikes, either you're gonna be slowed down significantly, kind of like a lesion trap, or you can't move whatsoever until you take out that specific zombie. This is going to leave you very vulnerable to those different breachers, which are gonna kind of swarm on in when you are immobilized. The fourth one on the list is called a smasher. Apparently they're really creative with these names, but the way that they describe it is that it is a parasite that reinforces its body under a massive thick hide, making it practically impervious to bullet wounds. They will also tear down walls without suffering any injuries. So basically a giant behemoth that I'm imagining you're gonna have to focus fire down if you wanna take it out. The final one is called the Apex. Now this one's really interesting because it doesn't fight you directly, it's gonna send out waves of hostiles to basically fight for it. It also has the ability to shoot out a blinding projectile, but it can be cured or countered by Finca, the new operator, or Doc. I'm guessing the way that you fight this guy is you have a couple of options. You can either fight the little minions, whittle them down, and then go for the big guy, or you can ignore the minions and just go straight for the apex. Of course, that leaves you a bit more vulnerable, but it's kind of that high risk, high reward. This also gives us a hint as to what Finca is gonna be capable of. We already know that one of the new operators is gonna have access to some sort of nanobots that they can give to teammates to give them some sort of buff or heal. There was a leak a while back that stated one of the operators is going to be able to give out this nanotechnology to their teammates that will heal them, give them faster run speed, and also reduce their recoil for a short period of time. And so the fact that this description says that Doc and Finca are able to cure whatever this blinding effect is, really makes me think that she is basically gonna be an offensive doctor with a little twist. Overall though, I'm really impressed by this variety. Going into it, when we first learned about the leak of a zombie mode, I just figured it would be fast and slow moving zombies. That is clearly not the case whatsoever. The fact that they're gonna be able to intermix this in different situations, you know, there's gonna be grunts, maybe an apex in the background, a smasher charges on through one of the doors, 
it's, it's going to be chaos. And if they do it right, it's going to be a lot of fun. And so while I was reluctant at first, every time we learn more and more about it, it does look like this is going to be a fully fleshed out mode and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Another thing that we learned about recently is that we got another look at the two new operators, Finca and Lion. We got this nice back picture of the two of them. And the first thing that stuck out to me is that at least the one on the left, which I think is Lion, isn't going to be a three speed whatsoever. He looks more like a two armor and really a three armored operator. Now, what's also really interesting is that there was another leak. Now, it was a leak, so take it with a grain of salt. But the leak indicated that these two operators are not going to be offense and defense, but they're both going to be for the attacking team. Now, personally, I don't really like that decision because I've always liked the dynamic where the new season comes out and no matter what side you're on, you get to play with a new operator. I've always loved that. Uh, but if this is true, that's really going to be changing things up. First of all, that means Lion on the left there, if he is a three-armored operator, that means that's the first three-armored operator that we've ever gotten in a DLC. They've always been two-armor or three-speed. We've never gotten someone that beefy for the offensive side. This also means that it could limit his effectiveness. You guys all know that the meta right now in Siege is to play as fast-moving operators, three-speeds. There's a reason why people love to play as Ella, Ash, Jaeger, all these fast-moving operators because of that speed advantage. And so I'm curious to see what his gadget is going to bring to the table. Now, I might be overthinking it. He might be a two armor, but he looks huge there. Like he looks like he's got a lot of armor on. And so what is his gadget and his weapons going to bring to the table that's going to make him, you know, a competitive choice here? I don't think that three armor on offense is going to automatically disqualify him from being competitive, but I'm really curious to see how they're all going to balance out. Uh, overall, though, everything we've learned about these last couple of days has been really exciting, and I cannot wait to play this DLC. There are a few things that I have my reservations on. The fact that these might be two offensive operators is a little odd. I'm not really 100% sold on it, but the fact that it seems like they're really going all in with this DLC, especially with the CGI cutscenes, they're bringing in a lot of variety in the gameplay. I could not ask for more, and I'm really hoping that they're going to be able to hit this out of the park. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed today. Are you liking the direction that Ubisoft is taking? Are you a little bit disappointed? Let me know down below in the comments section. Uh, but yeah, guys, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.